will take a lead to control the later bloom processes. And Liu et al. 2006 developed a pressure point proxy to uh, operate as a pre forecast system for the Carinia bloom along the coast and ha has been acting very well. So those models actually lump some thoughts behind the two processes and provide a statistical foundation for this. But today, what I'm interested in is a mechanism that really, why those physics can be brought in together to create a successful prediction of Carinia bloom in the coast. So is there, does that indicate when the two pieces interact each other, there's an offshore niche that we have considered. So the left showing you the deep water from the offshore, and this right side showing you the coastal region circulation. So there's a precondition suggested by both all the studies that we need a very strong, a long shelf, uh, prolonged penetration of loop currents flow along the shelf. Usually this current dr drive upslope upwelling and those bring up nutrients and also allow the cell aggregate at the bottom of the shelf. But there's also condition indicate that during this time we need the shelf to be in downwelling condition, which is not upwelling. It's, it's very interesting because this downwelling condition causes the bottom flow offshore, which creates a convergence zone along the shelf break, gives the opportunity for those um, floating species to aggregate, to increase above the background level. And after that, once the switch of the inshore process to upwelling, the cells will be transported inshore and grow along the pathway until they merge uh, along the coasts as blue. So to prove this concept, we need three pieces of information. We need Carinia bloom observation over a longer term, and we need proxy to indicate a coastal upwelling and also the offshore currents. So in, fortunately, we have three pieces of information that we can download from long-term observation. Um, the coastal proxy of upwelling, I use a, the sea level at tidal gauge station and correct for the thermal effects, then it will provide a very concise wheel of when the water goes up and down to represent the whole shelf upwelling and downwelling stage. And if we plot the upwelling on one axis and plot the along shelf currents offshore on the other axis, and we'll see the signal evolution of the likelihood of Carinia bloom. So this uh, traditional histogram we see showing us that the major bloom occurred in fall and then their secondary bloom occurred in next early spring. So they follow this major bloom. If we follow the signal track within this diagram, that we found that indeed it occurred within the upwelling phase of the coast and also relaxation of a long shelf currents. But bear in mind, if we look backward about like two months ago or three months ago, which the the offshore condition actually in the downwelling phase along with very strong currents. So which means those kind of precondition could cause the later on events in the coast if we think about the connectivity. So let's try whether this concept work to explain the variability of Carinia in the coast. So this is a long-term Carinia observation I purposely choose from for this 15-year period because after 2000, Carinia bloom observation actually occurred on a monthly basis, which gave us a very regular temporal interval. And also the along shelf currents showing a lot of variability. Um, you can see during some period, we have intense along shelf currents while we have less Carinia bloom. And some period we have very weak Currents, but strong blue. And also, we have this upward index showing the beautiful signal cycle near the coast. And we have this downwelling, upwelling, downwelling, upwelling alternation over the signal cycle. But looking closely, it's actually the phase of upwelling from year to year does not equal to each other. They're early upwelling, later upwelling, strong upwelling, and weak upwelling. So, all this could matter to the interaction with longshore currents. So, the method that we're using is trying to use the phenology concept to detect the timing of each year's upwelling events, starting time. So from that time and go back for two months, we track offshore condition. 
So this go back and only track the pieces of information along the yellow stripes. That is what we think matter for initial precondition of the cranial bloom. And if we combine the two information together, still this is a diagram I showed you a moment ago that we can distinguish this weak bloom years versus strong bloom years by looking into the um, optimal rate of a long, time a long shelf current and upwelling events. So this shows that if a long shelf current is too weak, which means do not have enough aggregation of initial um, KB seeds, or if it's too strong, bring the seeds in too early, or bring too much nutrients that cause other species dominant over this KB bloom, then it could cause a weaker bloom and vice versa. So this indicator meaning that we probably can develop a mechanistic model for the KB bloom instead of the, in addition to the statistical model we're using. So um, this is a particle tracking model um, Bob showed in his 2016 um, publication. This is already promising that shows if you release particle near the shelf, and one month later, you receive them along the Florida coast. So what occurs here actually tries to trick back to the offshore condition. And to prove of concept, so we propose to use more um, biological meaningful individual-based model with this cornea behavior and phytoplankton trace to take them in consideration. So amazing rate I would like you to remember a um, moment ago is about the division rate, 0 0.2 to 1 per day. That, if you consider the traveling, traveling um, time period from here to here, the water parcel take about half a month to one month to arrive at the coast. And multiply that by the division rate, and you will derive a likely increase of community population, con concentration of KB from background value to 10 to 10 to 4 cells per liter, which means they grow along the pathway. It's not just a local issue. It's a connectivity issue. And as a summary, so I think I'm a little bit over. So, um, so different planes indeed are controlled by the physics. Mainly this physics is along the vertical dimension by stratification and mixing. And also, I hope I convince you that there could be an offshore niche of the bloom in, as a precondition for the coastal bloom. And also, there are different models that could be prescribed to different uh, physical constraints on phytoplankton. And I think that's it. And I would like to uh, acknowledge my colleagues and also the funding I received for conducting the research. Thank you.